Watching the NFL this year, it seems like there's a lot more players hurt than normal. And it's probably because they had less practices in the off season. Now I'm in Canada and up here, we're not even having a season this year. And I'm willing to bet money that there's gonna be a lot more hamstring, leg, injuries all around on players once we start getting back on the field. You see, as an athlete, your hamstrings are very important. And when you're not working them out properly, they're gonna get hurt. You use them for almost everything you do. If you've had one yourself, or when your teammates can tell you, hamstring injuries are a major setback. It's not something that you want to experience or go through again. That's why in this video, I'm going to break down how to bulletproof your hamstrings. Get them faster, stronger, and more mobile by giving you a bunch of exercises and explaining the principles behind it for every type of hamstring workout. The absolute worst part about hamstring injuries is that it takes so long to get back to normal. You'll be running, you feel like you're at 90%, but when you try to go full out and go for a 100% sprint, it just doesn't feel right. You probably know what I'm talking about and it sucks. A couple summers ago, I was having some hamstring problems. And the reason because was that I wasn't working them out properly. Now I thought I was overtraining them so they were sore and tight. So I stopped working them out, sort of. And then they actually just ended up getting worse. So after that, I did a lot of research that I put into this video to understand how to properly train hamstrings to get them stronger, bulletproof them so they don't get hurt. Now, before we jump into it, two non-negotiables. You have to hydrate properly and eat well. I get about five liters of water a day in. It just helps with recovery and not cramping. Other than also eat well, you gotta get your nutrients, calories, and all that. Before games, I like to eat some salt and then drink lots of water. It helps you retain it and helps you not cramp in the game. And then also magnesium helps with the same thing. For best results, and I'll go through this in the video, you have to change up the tempo, the lifts you do, the range of motions, the weight, and don't be scared to work out your hamstrings so hard to the point where they cramp. You wanna work them out really hard so when it comes time to the game, they're ready for whatever it has to endure. Now the most important thing, the reason why guys pull their hamstrings all the time is that they don't work out properly. It's actually broken up into six principles, which we'll talk about throughout this video but they all come back to changing it up and exercising in different ways, every way that your hamstring needs it. Different ranges of motion and types of exercises that you could hit. Say if you only hit hamstring curls. Now when it comes time to sprinting, hitting that 40 yard dash, you know, scouts are watching, coaches are watching, it's your time to shine. Don't be surprised if you pull a hamstring because if you're only doing curls, you're only working on one part of the sprinting motion. So your muscles are gonna have to overcompensate in some areas and just not be used to the tension in other areas because you only worked out one range of motion there. To get the best chances to never pull a hamstring, have them bulletproof and consistently get better, we're gonna break it down into these six principles. One of the biggest reasons that people pull or damage, injure their hamstrings is because they don't get proper warmups in. And warmups are so important because you can't just go from walking or jogging to a full sprint. And that is when people usually pull their hamstrings in a full sprint. Especially if you're playing a sport and you just get thrown into a game, you have to be ready to go at any time. And some really important things for warm-ups would be getting accelerations in, running almost at full speed before you do it, and really just making sure that you get your blood pumping before you actually get into that situation. That's why track runners warm up for like an hour before races. And it helps prevent that injury. My favorite warm up, straight leg kicks. You get these in every time I work out my legs. Really good, loosens up your whole leg if you do enough of them. Just have a nice full extension, get your feet above your head. Body weight, single leg RDL, great for feeling that tension and extension in your hamstring. Get low, go slow, go fast and mix it up. Lunge rockers is another one I do every time I work out. You wanna sink into that lunge and then rock back so you're stretching both your hips and your hamstrings. It's all connected. Aside from squats, the curl motion is the one that people do the most. Hamstring curls, basics. And you can see when you run that your leg actually does that. Your foot comes up by your butt in a curl motion. I'm a fan of machine curls. They're great to build your hamstrings, get them bigger. I like doing one leg, the other leg, and then both in longer sets. You also go fast up and slow down. There's lots of different things you could do. Stability ball curls are also great. You can change up the tempo, do one leg, I also like to max out sometimes for reps and really just burn on my hamstrings. And then you could also do, by changing it up, you could do a circle, 
with the ball to target all the muscles you normally miss, but we'll get to that one later. A slider curl is one of my favorites because it really lets you get a full range of motion. On a curl machine, it might cut off, but this you can really get your heels as close to your butt as possible. Band curl is another great one. Depending on how long your band is, you might have to play around with it to get the proper range of motion. Hinge motion is the second most popular and it's very important for your power and your jumping. And it's easy to see just based on the range of motion for the different exercises. To work on this range of motion, any type of deadlift will do. Make sure that you're really feeling the tension in your hamstrings before bending at your knees. Single leg RDL. What you'll see me do a bit wrong in this video is that my hips don't stay exactly square. You wanna keep your hips in line and really just work on the hammies. Split stance, dumbbell hinge, another great way to have amazing tension in your hamstrings, get a great workout of it. Barbell single leg RDL. This one is a little more challenging. I find that it requires better balance, also gets your core working. Other motions, the ones that are forgotten about that if you don't do, will probably lead you to pulling a hammy at one point or another, or hopefully not tearing it at some point. So make sure you pay attention to these. You need to work on all the motions, so in case you're in an awkward position at any point in game or in your life, you don't get hurt from it. First one is Nordics. You can perform Nordics pretty much anywhere. These visuals are from my Instagram account. And you know, there's different ways to adjust for difficulty level. If you wanna use a stability ball or a band to help, or if you wanna just go completely on your own, up and down. There's a lot of different things you could do with Nordics, but you're always gonna get a great workout in with these. And just make sure that your hips are always locked out. If you have your butt too high in the air, it won't be targeting the right spots. Second is the circle stability ball curls, just really targeting all the small muscles that you usually miss and it's really working on all angles when you move the ball in a circle. Now it's hard to stay balanced here, so it might take a little while to get used to. Glued ham raise. What I like about this is that you can really focus on contracting and squeezing your hamstrings at the top. It gets a great range of motion and really a special kind of work that you can't get in much other exercises. Now an out in and up glued ham raise, it's just another way to change it up. Hypers are another different type of motion. If you have a machine, great. If not, you could use a band. Straight leg kickbacks, it's the same thing. Just a different way to work on your hamstrings with that special motion. And then finally, you got other leg exercises. Don't forget to squat, get those lunges in, pistol squats in different types of ways. You know, zombie squats, hands out wide. Although front squats are more targeting the quad, you don't wanna leave them out of your training regimen. RFS, Rear foot elevated split squat, another great way to target all of your muscles in there. And it's not just your hammies that'll get you hurt. If you're tightening your groin, if you're tightening your quads, your hips, it can all get you messed up. So you have to make sure that you work on and improve everything. Speed training is the best part because these exercises will have the biggest effect on you not pulling your hamstring in a 40 yard dash. In my training camp and in my rookie year, I saw a few people who lined up, sprinted, and pulled their hamstrings before they even finished. And the reason that you see this in the NFL and at different combines is that most guys don't do these proper exercises. Fast band kicks, great one. Fast ball kicks works if you don't have a band or if you just want to change it up. I recommend doing these speed ones for about 20 seconds each. Speed curls is great, a bit different on the range of motion, but just another way to target your hamstrings, move them fast. You could also do speed curls on a stability ball or even on a machine. Go really fast up and you can go slow down. This will help work on your explosion and injury prevention. But then any plyometrics you do is really helping your hamstrings improve. Now if you have special equipment, you can do a lot more at home, but here are some basic ones. Got glute raises on a bench. You can do one leg, two leg, switch up the tempo. Paper plate sliders. I know everyone could do this. Just find some paper plates around the house. Again, one leg, two leg. You've already seen this one. Nordics, a lot of different ways you could do this. Car, someone holding you on the ball. You've seen that one too. And then hold and squeeze. You wanna hold and squeeze your hamstrings. You can do 30 seconds on each side. And if you really focus on contracting the muscle, you will feel this. If you have ankle weights, even better. Now for more exercises, I have a free football quarantine training program. 
Check out the link in the description below, completely free. Everything in your legs is connected. You need to work out all of it and you need to be mobile everywhere. Because if you're tight in even one spot, <laughs> good luck, because the rest is going to end up being tight eventually. Especially if your groin is tight, everything's connected, it's not pretty. I recommend having a good deep stretch once a week, but getting a little bit of stretching in every day to make sure you're staying loose and help with recovery. And don't just do the basic toe touches. First up, we got belt stretches. So we got the three different angles I show in this video, but you could also work on pulsing your legs to get it more deeper in the stretch, but then also extend your legs to work on any tightness you have with your ligaments and tendons and all that clicky stuff. Hurdle stretch, make sure to get both versions of this in. Just another great way to stretch out your legs, open up your mobility and your strides. Groin stretch, do 10 reps of closing your legs and opening them and then sink into that position at least 60 seconds. Couch stretch is the most rewarding one for the pain it causes you. It's a harder stretch to do. Just get your knee right in the corner of it. You can use a couch, use a wall, start down on the ground if you have to with your hands, but work up to a nice upright position to really sink into that stretch. Okay, your four bonus tips. One, get a massage gun or just get massages. It really helps with recovery, especially massage gun, it works wonders. Two, don't forget about the rest of your recovery. You can do ice baths, hot tubs, cold chambers, whatever works for you, take advantage of whatever you can. Three, make sure to roll out every day before your workouts. It just helps loosen everything, keeps it healthy, especially with knee pain. That's a whole other topic and rolling does crazy wonders for that. Four, decel slowly. If you're sprinting full speed, other than just stop moving your legs as fast, you are in a dangerous position for overstretching and getting a weird extension and that could really be dangerous for your hamstrings and you might pull something. Thanks for watching the video. Comment below what you learned and for that free football quarantine training program, the link is below in the description. Make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And now that you know how to properly train your hamstrings and you keep getting better, check out these videos on how to increase your running speed, run faster.